so dad's results in the you know in, during the year especially since his win kind of been mixed and he's fast running great laps leading some laps in some races you know crashing and and finishing poorly in others uh some races they just don't even have the pace it's uh it's a little bit of everything happening week to week not a lot of consistency but there are these moments like at texas where the car's fast and he's racing for an opportunity to win and something will happen um so i think at this point in the season dad's just trying to figure out how to get some consistency some balance some to smooth out you know the results uh but also their ability to run a little bit better they go into short tracks where dad should be great the car should be great and they're just being you know they're just okay they're just finishing the races a couple laps down in the top five in the top 10 not leading any laps where you think they would be good um so there's these moments where um you know they just don't show up at all and then there's races where they're doing what they think they can do and lead laps but not getting the finishes they need um and so joe you know, joe milliken is very steady he's sort of always getting the the result this you know the fifth the sixth the tenth the eighth the ninth he's just finishing races not making a bunch of mistakes and steadily building up a pretty solid rookie season that's um rivaling dad's uh rookie year so it's coming uh, it's developing into a tight race for the rookie of the year title i'm sure that once dad won the race at bristol he saw a slight change in how the veterans and the other drivers started to to talk to him and 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 maybe you know some of them drew withdrew a little bit like you know now they look at him as a as a rival as um someone that that you know could beat them on any given weekend whereas before he was this young guy everybody was excited about everybody wanted to help him everybody wanted to see him do better um and uh as the season goes on he starts to get these perks um that some of the veterans are used to getting the opportunity to race in the irock series that invitation as a rookie has got to be incredible so he's doing things outside of driving on sunday in the cup car um that are acknowledging his you know his growth and success in the series and i bet that you know the the drivers the cup drivers started expecting more out of him started expecting less mistakes started expecting less aggression less you know uh and dad's still gonna make mistakes he's still a rookie he's still gonna you know he goes to michigan and uh, makes a mistake at some point near the end of the race and, and slides up in front of a bunch of guys and almost takes out a few cars and um some of the drivers you know they get out and they go hey you know you you're you're getting better you're growing you got to cut this kind of stuff out and we don't like to put each other in bad situations and that's what you've done and so they they start to you know, as dad's getting more confidence every once in a while, they're like, Hey, we got to knock you down a few la- rungs on the ladder. You know, you're getting, you're getting a little bit too confident. You still have these X, Y, and Z mistakes to clean up. Um, don't lose focus of what you need to continue to improve. And, you know, there was some, yeah, I mean, they go to the media and, and they, they were so, it's interesting to me, I guess, reading all of these quotes throughout this whole project of how honest they were and open to the media they were about, you know, their appear, their opinions on drivers or moves drivers were making. And we'll see that more and more as we go through the series. I think every driver's involved in those conversations on both sides, right? I think as a rookie, we all get that conversation with the veteran where we make a mistake or we tick somebody off and we don't even know we've done it. Sometimes the driver, you know, the veteran comes over and he's mad at you. I was at T- Daytona uh my second year in the xfinity series i've won the xfinity series championship seven races in 1998 we go into 99 and i wrecked a bunch of cars in practice and uh myself included a couple cup drivers like uh jeff burton and uh dick trickle all came over to me and they're they're madder and heck i was so ashamed 
I didn't know. I had no idea that I'd ticked off all these people. I knew there was a crash and there was a lot of cars got wadded up in it. But I thought, man, you know, I'm I won the championship. I'm you know I'm out there racing, practicing, trying to practice hard. But when those veterans come up to you, man, that gets your attention. And I've been on that side of it, and I've been on the other side of it too, where you try to you try to talk to a young driver, and sometimes you get through, and sometimes you can tell that they're they're too proud of themselves to be able to listen to anybody, and and you just have to do the best you can to try to try to help them understand what they what they need to pay attention to and improve. Looking at Dad's career from a big, you know, going back and looking at all of it, uh, his rookie year in '79, '80, all the way up until you know. He wins the championship in 1980. I mean, how do you tell a driver with two full two full seasons under his belt that's a champion driver? Like, how do you treat him like a rookie? And how do you talk to him like a rookie? I bet it was difficult for Kill and Daryl and all of those drivers. I bet they all had a hard time being able to tell Dad anything, right? Because he comes in, wins a race at Bristol, wins a rookie of the year. He's running up front. Uh, and then he goes into 1980 and has even more success. And I bet it got harder and harder for them to try to convince Dad this is something he can improve. Or, you know, you may I think you made a mistake there uh, in the in the last couple laps of that race. I bet Dad was harder and harder to communicate that to because he probably became more and more emboldened uh, about his his. Hey, I was doing what I needed to do. I did. I didn't. I didn't do anything wrong there. I was taking care of me. I was racing hard. Hey, I'm gonna do everything I can. You know, he. You could see in his comments as we're going through this year in 1979, he transitions from this really timid. I don't want to tick anybody off. I want to be good. I want everybody to appreciate me. I think they're. You know, I think the veterans are comfortable with me. He really transitions into this. You know, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win a championship. I'm out here to race. I'm racing hard. Uh, you know, I'm going to make mistakes, but I'm here to race. I'm here to take the car to the front. You know, he just sort of, his whole mentality and, and his whole tone changes throughout the whole year. I think Dad's aggressive style comes from being broke, eating bologna sandwiches every day, uh, because, you know, just not being able to pay his own power bill and rent, um, never having a new car to drive around you know all those things just being i think just grinding and this you know getting a paycheck and going all right how much of this can i put toward my race car this weekend what's absolutely necessary to give to my wife so the kids get get to eat you know he's really like nick lennon diamond every single movie makes all through the 70s and it created a lot of problems lost you know caused a couple divorces um, and he was super selfish, you know, and totally his priorities were one thing. And that was, I want to win a race. I want to win the next race. I want to make it in racing. I want to go to the top. How do I get there? Everything else has to fall in line. And I think that that mentality, he carried that into the cup series when he started to get a little traction and a little success, make a little money. It just continued to motivate him more and more um, to keep charging forward, right, at all costs. And for how – I don't know how um, he was able to hang on to that mentality for so many years, even after he had success, you know. We'll learn as we go through. He wins a championship in 1980, and then he gets his legs knocked out from under him for about four years trying to figure it out. You know, he goes – he barely – I mean, he literally goes back to the bottom of the barrel in 81 – and has to climb his way back out of that that hole. His tenacity, that's the best word I can think of to describe the way he, he was on the racetrack, was no one was like it in my mind, at least in that time. When he's out there on the racetrack, the veterans had a style. They all sort of adopted this similar sort of patient style where they all knew the etiquette, and Dad come in with a totally different set of rules that he raced under. And he didn't necessarily conform to how Daryl, Kale, and Richard Petty and all of those drivers wanted to be raced. You know, they got, the, you know, there's, Richard stuck his finger in his chest after a Martinsville race in 79, 80. And, uh, you know, those moments were teaching moments for Dad. And he certainly changed what he was doing so that that never happened again. But, um, 
you know, when it came down to it and he had the car to win, you never knew what you were going to get when he was in the mirror. Hey, if you like that video, like and comment below and don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another piece of Dirty Mo Media content.